Hey guys, I'm Nate, and I'm just beginning this YouTube channel, and you may be wondering why I just began a YouTube channel. I'm kind of late to the ball game. You know, there are people that have been doing this for like 10 to 15 years now. Um, well, I just wanted to give back. I know we're all kind of at a tough time right now in a quarantine. A lot of people are losing loved ones and stuff like that. So I just wanted to help um, brighten people's day, honestly, and hopefully y'all enjoy it. So we're going to begin with the Stanley Parable. And let's begin. If you've never heard of the Stanley Parable, um, it's kind of a narrative game. And we'll get into more of what it actually is. This is the story of a man named Stan. Hi, I'm Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427, and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly this job and Stanley was happy that's good Stanley was happy and then one day something very peculiar happened something that would forever change Stanley something he would never quite forget he had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow no one had showed up to give him instructions call a meeting or even say Hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. All right, so I'm supposed to step out of the office right now. As the narrator All said, All his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Um, you can, you can either obey the narrator or you can disobey him and not do what he says. I'm going to do what he says right now. Um, at least for this first time. There's a bunch of different endings and possibilities in this. So we're going to follow, we're going to go to the meeting room. That kind of looks like a torture room. When Stanley came oh. to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Alright, we're gonna go into the door on the left. And it closes behind us so we can't go back. And we're gonna keep on trucking on, see what's ahead. Oh, here, this looks like the meeting room. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. How to solve a dispute with the coworker? Let it ball up inside of you. Take it out passive aggressively on other coworkers. Oh, using slides to assure their employ employees that everything is okay. Make sure your slide has a slit blue graphic in the header and throw some bevel on all that text. This one, sure, calm and productive. Oh, everyone is unique. You, most of all. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's kind of funny, actually. That's actually really funny. Number of slides on this. Wow. They gave a pie chart about nothing, basically. Wow. All right. Let's see, is there anything good over here? Target. Uh, not really. Please, no more charts. I'm begging. The broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here. So he turned around and got back on track. Okay. I got back on track. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay. Walk upstairs to the boss's office. Wow, this is a nice office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication wow, of any there, human life. There's no human life. Shot Unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. 
And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. 2845. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code Whoa. by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. All right, I stepped into the newly opened passageway. I guess I'm going down this elevator here. Ooh. Okay. Let's see where this goes. Oh, loading screens. I hate loading screens. Fortunately, this one doesn't seem to be too bad, but... Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. Yeah. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. All right, so we're going to go down here, I guess. I guess that's what he wants us Stanley to do. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Wow. Mind Control Facility. Ooh, this looks scary, actually. Go press the button. The lights rose on Whoa. an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Yeah, I I definitely have the strength to find out, and I'm gonna find out. Let's see what this all is about. Okay. Oh, there's the button. Now the monitors jump to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Whoa. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley one of them eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing wow this is actually pretty creepy not gonna lie this mind control facility it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true had stanley really been under someone's control all this time was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job that his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly this is actually pretty good. No. Creepy. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. Uh, it was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was yeah. it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Looks like he was controlled, but here honestly. was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content walking eating working all of it monitored and commanded from this very place and as the cold reality of his past began to sink in stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over That's another right. human life for he would dismantle the controls once and for all i'm gonna turn it on oh stanley you didn't just activate the controls, did you? Yes. After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Yeah. Oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. Wow. How long until detonation then? Hmm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going. 
what all this means. I barely know where to start. Where are you going to start? You'd like to know where your co-workers are. A moment of solace before you're obliterated. All right, I'm in a good mood. You're going to die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I what? turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go around will be even better. This guy has a lot My wrong goodness, with him. Only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable yeah. of turning it off? something's got to be I capable mean, of turning it off. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Yeah. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? Not really. <laughs> Stanley, you're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. Oh, okay. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. You're sick. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. You're but actually I'm really sick. It first, so you can't. You have a lot wrong with you. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here. Just you being blown to pieces. You have a lot will wrong with this narrator. Your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice? Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to me. All a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. So what happened? I, I mean, I, I, obviously I'm assuming I blew up. But... What's next? That narrator guy has a really bad attitude problem. Anyway. Oh, I start over. Alright. So, that'll be it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please be, leave a like. Let me know, most importantly. I just want to know what you guys enjoy. But, I hope that's that you enjoyed it. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye.